What do you want? Parker, boy. What are you doing? Okay, so um, we're going to take this stuff over to the bench. I'll show you uh, how to test resistance on the coil for the PTO to make sure it's not an open circuit. And uh, we'll clean everything up. Clean this plate up too. Everything's just really rusty and gross. Uh, I'm not going to bother trying to paint any of it or prep it that well, but I am going to try to clean it up a little bit. Okay, let's start by testing the resistance of the windings in the coil of the uh, PTO. I am going to put some epoxy in these holes here too, just to seal up where the, um, the insulation's cracked. And it looks bad, but... So you've got your lead here. This is where it would plug into the tractor. And that lead goes into the backside of the PTO plate. You know, makes a bunch of turns and then is attached here and uh, soldered or brazed or however they do it uh, to the plate. So what you're checking is the resistance of the wire to the, the ground. So it's basically this is the other side of the wire right here more or less. So you're checking how much resistance is in that circuit. So we're going to set it to ohms. Shove one side in the connector. And always test your leads, make sure they're not open. Don't do anything funky, should be about 0.1 to 0.2, somewhere in there. Getting two and a half ohms. Uh, the temperature in the shop right now is probably 45 degrees, maybe, something like that. Um, so if, if we're seeing anywhere from 2 to 4 ohms, we're good. Um, if we showed an open circuit, like that, that would mean that electricity is not going to pass through the coil and get back to ground. So that would, that would indicate that the, the windings in the coil uh, don't make it all the way from one end to the other. So we've tested continuity and we're checking the amount of resistance, which is basically just checking how many of the windings are still intact. If it was excessive resistance, you'd see something real high, then you would know that there was a uh, not an open circuit, but probably some kind of weird short occurring. Like if there was a tiny little break, and there was a tiny little break in the wire and it had a hard time getting uh, getting across the the brake, then you would see a higher resistance. But looks like we're we're in spec there. I did test this on the tractor, and it worked just fine. So I never tested it under a load. Um, but these are adjustable gap PTO setups. So once we clean up the mating surfaces here and here, and then get it installed and set the gap between between those two surfaces, uh, we should be able to get it back into spec. This one's adjustable, which is nice. So electrically, it checks out. Uh, now it's just a process of cleaning everything up. So this dude here, like I said, I, I went through and staked the bearing in place. Uh, I'm just going to wire wheel everything, sand down, wire wheel, all of that. Same with this dude here. going to clean him up. And same with this dude here. And also the bushing. And then once it's all cleaned up, we'll assemble the unit onto the tractor and we'll adjust the air gap. So let's get started on some of the cleanup. I'm just going to go kind of quick and dirty on it and try to get some of the major, major crap off of it. I'm not going to go crazy. Be careful of the wire. You don't want to... I'm going to chonk on it. Oh, yeah. 
I smell, I smell old burnt hot oil. The decades are starting to show themselves on this. Ooh, we got a bent dude right here too. Have to fix that. That thing's all kinds of wonked. Poor guy. How do you get all bent like that? Man. I just don't understand. Definitely keep your wire wheel away from the the windings and the coil. I said keep your wire wheel away. I'm reminding myself. I'm not telling you what to do, I'm trying to remind myself. Last thing you want to do is break this wire right where it goes into the winding. That would be bad times. It would be very bad times. Not irreparable, but very bad times. Lots more work. Studs off. This is gross. In addition to being bent, they're also just gross. Oh, that one, dude. What happened there? I got most of the cruft off of it. Let's wipe it down. Here, I'll get an actual. Just found out the other day that this is 2022 when this is being shot. So, in the spring of 2022, brake clean in America is now like six, seven dollars a can. That's ridiculous. So be a little more sparing with it than I normally would be. And I'm going to bring some epoxy over and we'll fill this guy and let him sit. We don't want to build up too much epoxy here because of the way that the, the plate sits. And you can actually see a little bit of rubbing right here. So we're going to want to be careful not to build up too much. We don't want it to contact the rotating assembly. Let's see what's going on with this. Does it still fit? Nope, definitely won't fit. Okay. So there's our funky stud. That's what's happening there. It's uh, it ain't gonna go on like that. So before we epoxy this, let's fix that. Man, they're all jacked up. That one's jacked up too. The only one that's I think that one's okay. That's like the only one. I'm gonna put the nut down over top of these studs and then bend this back so that it fits the way it should. Bago hardware from two years ago that I haven't looked at in two years. Got some star washers, here are the springs. Here we got nuts. Looks like I got away with uh, most of the stuff that was there, maybe not all of it. Oh, that's not fun. What's going on there? Are these even the right ones? No. That's what we want. And they're... Look like a fine thread. 5 16 fine thread. I think is what those are. I'm just going to take this 
and try to bend it back with the nut on there. Shouldn't take much. I mean, it's basically just the. Yeah, unfortunately, it's going to try to tweak the whole plate to do that. Man, how did that happen, dude? It's going to bend the plate rather than moving the stud. All right, I'm going to figure this out, and we'll come back when we're ready to test fit again and then put the epoxy on the coil. Okay, so I got the, uh, the ring to fit. Um, none of this is ideal. I don't know how this thing got so bent, but it does fit over top of it, so we're going to roll with it. Now we'll mix up some JB Weld and fill in all the cracks. I don't even know how much to mix here. I'm just going to start small. I think I'm going to need more than that. What would we do without JB Weld? What a fine engineering marvel JB Weld is. I think that'll be plenty. And then we'll set this part aside for... 24 hours. This is just the regular cure JB Weld. Uh, I've used the quick cure stuff before too, and sometimes it holds pretty well, and other times it doesn't. I don't know. It's probably the variable is probably me and how I'm applying it and how I'm prepping the surface. I didn't sand any of this or score any of this up. Um, I didn't want to touch any of the insulation on the wiring. So, I know it's better, JB Weld bonds better if you sand stuff. Get a little bit of a coarse surface for it to bond to. But, I'm not doing it on this one, so. Alright, here we go. I can just start packing it in, I guess. I'm going to start by getting the little cracks first. Fill it down into those crevices in there. Like right next to the, right next to the diameter here, where they're, Pretty heavy cracks. Get those first. And then we'll come through and just want to make sure we get it down in there. Put a little skim coat up on it afterwards. That's a pretty big one there. Yikes. Trying to keep it away from here. Yeah, I know, I could buy a new PTO for 100 bucks, 150 bucks, but I've never really had the uh, luxury of throwing parts at problems, so old habits die hard. I'm more likely to try to fix something than to just buy a new one. Sometimes it's the only thing that makes sense is just to buy a new one, but I think we, we still have some life in this guy. Hoping to mow with the 1882 this year and kind of work out all the kinks in the tractor uh, by mowing with it and getting some hours uh, behind the wheel. Uh, get a good feeling for what all the tractor really needs. And uh, then once the tractor is pretty stable, doesn't really need much of anything, um, I probably won't be using this PTO very much. Because the idea is that it's going to be, uh, I'm going to build a loader and backhoe for it. Yeah, I know, it's ridiculous, but and it's not really ridiculous, it's just a lot of work. And it's hard to see right now where I'll have the time to do that. But you got to have goals, right? First goal, make it run. Second goal, make it work. Third goal, make sure it works well. And then fourth goal is modify. And that's where we'll start doing some fab work. But we're a long ways off from that now. So I might come across here with like a business card or something and just push this. Like, I need like a Bondo squeegee. It would be sweet right now. I don't have one though. And if this ends up being a little too high up for when the uh, the clutch 
gets put together then we can we can always sand the JB weld it's it's not hard to work with so all right time to start getting all the little ones filling in all the little cracks and then spreading it around all right I'm gonna cut this and uh, come back and we'll show it complete and uh, then we'll move on with the rest of the PTO